Eric from Phone Scoop here. Today, just like the Go Go's, I've got the Beat, the Samsung Beat, a new music phone for T Mobile. The Beat is a very small clamshell, especially when compared to other modern models, which seem to be growing larger and larger. As you can see, I can practically hide it in my hand. On the front of the Beat is a VGA camera a full color display, and music controls, which feature the usual play, pause, forward, and reverse, but also features a playback control, which lets you do things like turn on shuffle, repeat, that sort of thing, and a stop button, which lets you exit the player completely. The controls are surrounded by this green ring, which is a speaker. It's not loud enough to use the beat as your own personal boombox, but it is loud enough to hear ringtones or m listen to music in a quiet room. On the left hand side is the port for the headset and charging jack. You have to use an adapter to use your normal headphones with this phone, but it does have stereo Bluetooth if you have stereo headphones. Below that are the volume keys. As you can see, they're set very low on the phone. This makes it awkward to change the volume, especially while you're on a call. If you're holding the phone like this, you can see that you have to shift your, your hand way down and contort your thumb to switch the volume on it. On the right hand side is the micro SD slot, which even though it's recessed slightly, is very easy to use. A camera button and a button which has two functions. One is to launch the music player or switch back and forth between the music player and the home screen, as well as locking the keys so that if the music player is on, you can set it a key guard so that hitting the controls by accident on the outside won't change your playback. The, black, the back is pretty much empty. On the inside is a small but very usable screen and a keypad, which also looks small, but is surprisingly easy to text on. If we give this the old phone scoop test, I know this looks like a blank screen, but if we scroll down, we get the text area. You can see that it's surprisingly easy to use despite its small size. Unlike many other entry-level or mid-range music phones, the Beat doesn't just slap music controls onto what's otherwise a regular cell phone. It's got a new music player on it, which has a number of nice touches that you would expect from a genuine music phone. You can start the music player either from the outside by holding down on the play pause key, which takes a little while, and when that happens, it goes to the first song in the most recent playlist. Or you can start it by holding down on the music player key from the home screen. And it will launch right into the same song. We found that if you launch the player from the external controls, sometimes both the playlist and the performance is a bit wonky. So I recommend you open up the phone to at least launch the player. And then if you need to control the music without opening it, it's no problem to use the external controls once you've got it going. As you can hear, the speaker is pretty clear, even though it's not necessarily the loudest. There are a number of nice features on this player, as I've said. One is the fact that when you insert a memory card, it just looks for a music folder and then automatically adds all the tracks to the library. Unlike many other um, music players on entry-level or mid-range phones, this one does an excellent job of reading the ID3 tags, including the ability to play your uh, albums in the order that the tracks appear on the album as opposed to sorting them alphabetically, which it seems too many players do. So we're really happy about that. It also adds a number of features right to the player itself. 
such as the ability to rate tracks or to set the current track as a ringtone or an alarm tone. In addition to the music player, the beat has a standard set of applications and abilities that you find on most T-Mobile phones. Messaging, instant messaging, access to T-zones and the like. Uh, it does have one weakness, which is signal strength. We found that it didn't pass our classic vault test very well. Um, we were able to make a call in the vault, but it sounded horrible. It does have good battery life, and everything else on it is good. So if you live in an area with strong reception, this could be a phone to consider, especially when you look at the price and the quality of music playback that you get from it.